All right, so this video got demonetized because I said a no-no word in the first 15 seconds. So I'm just re-uploading this video to comply with their policy that I can't describe yet because I would get demonetized. God, this is fucking bullshit. So I get a lot of challenge ideas from you guys. Sometimes it's hard to come up with new ideas, so having input from all of you is really helpful. 99% of the time. The other 1%, you guys send me ideas that are absolutely ridiculous and completely fucking impossible. So today I've picked out 10 challenges that you've recommended that I'm certain are impossible, and I'm gonna try them all to show exactly why they aren't very possible at all. Can you beat Borderlands 2 using only Cloud Kill? Cloud Kill is an extremely powerful ability. It can carry you through normal mode and TVHM and is still really useful in UVHM. This shouldn't be a challenge at all. You know, if I could activate it. You have to hit enemies with bullets to activate Cloud Kill, but if I hit an enemy with a bullet, it wouldn't be Cloud Kill only. You can also trigger Cloud Kill by reflecting bullets with Kinetic Reflection or an Antagonist Shield, but that would still deal the damage from the bullets. Also, enemies that don't shoot bullets would be unkillable. You could do this in UVHM and use level 1 guns to activate Cloud Kill so the damage doesn't really affect anything, but I'm being pedantic here, so it's not possible. Can you beat Borderlands 2 without walking? No. No, you can't. Turns out legs are important. I assume the person who suggested this meant for me to use a geared character and grenade jump and rocket jump everywhere, but that wouldn't really be a challenge. I could use a boosted character, but Little Gas Mask already tried that, so go check out that video if you want to see if it's possible. But starting from a level 1 save, not even a little possible. Alright, now we're starting to get into the challenges that sound pretty doable. Can you beat OP10 using only Death Trap? Death Trap is Gage's action skill, and she has a bunch of abilities that buff him, making him pretty powerful. Slight problem. In OP levels, Death Trap is hot trash garbage. Why? Well, his damage doesn't scale with OP levels, and the enemies outheal everything he can throw out. He may as well be slapping them with a mildly wet pool noodle and asking them nicely to die. I couldn't even make it past the first enemies in the game, so that's, you know, not great. It's pretty obvious there's no chance that you could beat OP-10 with only Death Trap. Did I say challenges that sound doable? Well, never mind. Can you beat Borderlands 2 while holding your breath the entire time? Well, let's do some quick math. The world record for longest time holding your breath is 24 minutes, and the world record for beating Borderlands 2 is 54 minutes. Now I know numbers, and that shit don't add up. Now as far as I know, Borderlands has never been beaten by a corpse, so this one doesn't seem super doable. Wait, unless we count boosted characters. The world record for beating the game with a boosted character is 10 minutes. I wonder if Dark Smoke can hold his breath for 10 minutes. Can you beat Borderlands 2 using only stock grenades? If you don't have a grenade mod equipped, you can still throw a grenade. This is mostly used for grenade jumping and the damage is pretty shit. Let's ignore the fact that you would certainly run out of grenade ammo before killing anything. I'd probably allow using spell grenades to regenerate ammo to get around that. There are some enemies you just wouldn't be able to damage. Like the Bunker. I'm using a level 80 character just so the damage will be obvious. There's no way you can hit the Bunker with... Oh. Well, there's no way you can hit it in its last cycle. Huh. You can kill the Bunker with default grenades. Jesus Christ, is this challenge possible? Am, am I gonna have to fucking do this now? Nah, I'm just kidding. When I did Gearless Sal, we found out you can't hit this turret with stock grenades. Which kind of sucks, because it'd be interesting to see someone try to do this. Not me, though. Fuck that. Can you beat Borderlands without turning? You can look up and down, but you can't look left or right. It's not hard to figure out why this wouldn't be doable. You have to look at doors to go through them. And turns out the door after Knuckle Dragger is angled in a way where you can't go through it without turning towards it. I'm sure there are plenty of spots where you can't continue, but this first door makes the challenge impossible. Can you beat Borderlands using only the fastball? I only know this one is impossible because Little Gas Mask already tried it. The reason it's impossible is pretty unexpected, so you should check out that video to see why. Can you beat Borderlands by jumping on enemies' heads? Let's put aside the fact that you would have to be out of your fucking mind to even think about doing this, which to be fair applies to most of this list. There are definitely some enemies that can't be damaged by jumping on them, like these turrets before Bunker. You have to kill them to progress, but even if you get on top of this wall, you can't jump on them. There's an invisible barrier that makes it so you just slide down the wall. Fun fact, you also can't kill them with stock grenades. 
or even a bada boom. Yeah, these turrets are fucking weird. They're fully immune to most splash damage for some reason, and also jumping on them, apparently. Can you beat OP10 without items? Ever since I beat UVHM without items, so many people have asked me to continue it into OP levels. I'm convinced those people have never played in OP levels. Even with gear, OP10 is a struggle. And you think it's possible to do it gearless? I tried my best, kinda, and it did not go well. Release the beast made killing the enemy somewhat possible, but yeah, no. I couldn't even clear out Liarsburg. Okay, this is by far the most ridiculous. Gearless Sal was bad enough, but without skill points, there's no way in hell it'd be even a little bit possible. I doubt I'd even make it past Flint. But I said I'd try them, so let's see how far I can get. Fun fact, even though none of the characters can use their action skill without skill points, one of the six is actually still better for this challenge than any of the others. Can you guess who? It's Krieg. Every character's base melee damage increases as they level up, but Krieg's increases by more. Meaning, even when you take everything away from him, Krieg still manages to be the best. Anyway, I started my adventure by using Gibd to start the game at level 31. I recently showed that my auto hockey script can farm Fight for Sanctuary for me from level 1 to 31 in less than 24 hours, so what's the difference between me running the script for 24 hours versus just using Gibd to accomplish the same thing? Literally nothing! Unlike Gearless Sal, I don't have Fistful of Hurt or Sexual Tyrannosaurus, which means I don't do nearly as much damage and I have much less survivability. Actually, I have no survivability. The only way I can recover health is by picking up or buying health vials or just leaving the game. Being level 31 against Knuckle Dragger makes him one swift jab away from the Shadow Realm, so that wasn't an issue. I one-shot everything on the way to Boom Boom. Big Bertha actually took two hits to kill, but Boom and Boom both got one shot. Getting to Flint was about as difficult as you'd expect. It wasn't. But I entered the arena ready to prove to the world that this challenge is as stupid as it sounds, but instead I got the bad ending and killed Flint before he even realized it was there. Okay. Um, this is seeming more doable, but I guess I'll just have to go further to find a spot where it actually becomes impossible. Jumping ahead to the Bloodshot Stronghold, Bad Ma actually took a good few hits to kill and did a decent bit of damage to me. Not that it would have mattered, because you can lure him to the gate and kill him with a car, but the fact that he even stood a chance against me just goes to show how quickly the level scaling is going to catch up to me. I made it through the blood shots in less than 10 minutes. I don't know how, but I did. This should be where the run ends. There's no way in hell I kill the Warden. Alternatively, I could kill the Warden more easily than any challenge I've ever done on this channel. Huh. Okay, this is getting a little frustrating because I know this is impossible, but I expected it to become impossible a lot faster, and now I have to keep playing through this until I eventually just hit a wall. Well, that wall came in the form of a giant yellow robot ostrich named Wilhelm. My stock grenades do an unholy amount of damage, but once I run out, there's just no way to get close enough to him to do any damage with my punches. And with no way to heal, I'm pretty fucked. But, uh, that was actually really close. I'll try again. Okay, that was less close, that makes more sense. I'll give it one more try for good measure. Okay, so by dealing most of my damage with stock grenades, I actually managed to kill Wilhelm. For the love of god, okay, I know exactly where this is gonna become impossible. It's the autocannon before the bunker, the one I had a grenade jump to hit. The only reason I did enough damage is because I had Fistful of Hurt. The only way I could deal enough damage to kill it without skill points is if I managed to farm way higher than 31, and there's no way to do that. Oh my god, yes there is. Death Race. Death Race is a mission in the Tor DLC that gives 10,000 XP every two minutes, is infinitely repeatable, and isn't hard at all. If you had the patience, you could do Death Race over and over for hours and get to whatever level you want. It would only take about three hours to get from level 31 to 40, which would be plenty high enough to beat the game. So as stupid as it is, it is perfectly possible to beat the game with no items, no skill points, and no action skill. I'm not gonna do it, because I didn't just break out of a fucking asylum, but it's doable. Well, if you think any of the other challenges on this list are possible, let me know in the comments. Patron shoutouts. Big ol' extra special thanks to Chody, who loves playing catch, but doesn't have anyone to play with, so he throws the ball all the way around the world and catches it himself. Craig's Cottage, who is 4,200 years old, but still looks about 30, because 
magic, I guess. Extra special thanks to Shedder Dude, who for Christmas asked Santa for a single grain of rice because he was kinda hungry, but not that hungry. US Navy Squid, who can keep food cold without a refrigerator. They use a freezer. Mick Baconator, whose horoscope warned him against investing in stocks, but he did it anyway and he got hit by a bus. Little XHMX, who was half fish like a mermaid. Now I know what you're wondering. Which half? Left half fish. Tajin Perry, who caused the world's slowest car crash. Both cars were parked. One pump man, who taught himself how to fly a plane. He hasn't taught himself how to land yet, though. Hopefully he figures that one out soon. Special thanks to Tarkus Lives, who is the perfect example of the seven heavenly virtues. Especially humility. Just ask him and he'll tell you he's the most humble guy around. Fligmode, who can survive anything. At least, he has so far. Dwarvo, who's immune to bullets as long as they're not moving too fast. Professor Sequoia, who can instantly calculate any mathematical formula. It'll be wrong, but oh boy is it fast. Wabaki, who can do anything in under a minute. Anything. Thea Watson, who had both feet replaced with roller skates to get around way faster. Rhododendron, who knows every word in the English language. Even this one. Yeah, that's fucked. And Warlord, whose only weakness is that he has no weaknesses. Which makes job interviews a little difficult. 